careful what you wish for. <laughs> Have you ever, ever heard that before? Yes. Yes, all right. Can I use you later? All right, awesome. How about this one? Be careful what you pray for. Have you said that or heard somebody else ever say that before? No. No? How about others? Yes. How about this one? Maybe a little more specific. Be careful if you pray for patience because God's going to throw all sorts of circumstances in your path to test your patience. Have you ever heard somebody say that? You know, sometimes we're kind of scared to ask God for things. And a matter of fact, a, um, a dear, dear friend of mine and a uh, spiritual mentor, my father, told me of um, a prayer that he prayed prays, and how he was afraid of how God was going to answer the prayer. And I want to share that with you this morning. Over 30 years ago, when he was just a young Christian, he decided that he was going to pray this prayer. Maybe you've thought of this prayer, maybe you've been afraid to pray it as well. He said, I'm going to pray this prayer. God, I give you permission to do whatever it takes to make me the man you want me to be. I mean, that's, that could be a scary prayer. I, I want to pray that prayer, but I mean, think about Hebrews 11, for instance, and what those people went through. Some people were sawed in half. Some people were hit, uh, beat with whips. Some people were put in, I mean, uh, put in chains. You, you've got this whole list of things that, that God's faithful people have gone through. And sometimes maybe we feel afraid, like, boy, if I give God permission to work in my life, maybe he'll put me through some of that. Well, this was a really neat testimony I had from my dad that he shared with me just recently. 30 plus years later, after praying that prayer, still praying that prayer, he said to me, just reflecting back, he said, son, looking back in my life and maybe being afraid to pray that prayer, God, I give you permission to do whatever it takes. Looking back at my life, I haven't seen persecution, abnormal persecution. I haven't been put in prison. I haven't been put in chains. I haven't been beaten. I haven't been whipped. I haven't been sawed in half. I haven't been thrown in the lions. God used normal, regular circumstances to work out in those circumstances to make me the man that he wants me to be. That was encouraging to me. God can use any circumstance to teach you. He doesn't have to give you extreme circumstances. Well, maybe if you're a hard head, you might have to turn up the heat a little bit. But when you surrender to him, when you allow him to work in your life, he doesn't have to use the hard things. Have you ever had an experience where, and this is the terminology that I use sometimes, if I've heard other people use it too, it's almost like God has to whack you over the head with a two by four in order to get you to understand what I'm trying to teach you. <laughs> Not literally, but you kind of get the point. When we surrender to God, when we let go, and we just let God be God, He can do a work in us much better, much easier than when we strive, when we hold on to these, this survival mode, when we hold on to this, I, I can do it mode. Just let go. And let God be God. And that's where I want to take you this morning. Turn with me to, to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. You heard it this morning. You heard it this morning just read so beautifully by Matthew. Thank you, Matthew, for reading that. Psalm 46. Verse 10. Maybe you've heard this before, maybe even when you were young, or maybe some of you young people have heard your parents say this while you're in church. Scripture says, be still and know that I am God. You're supposed to be still. Yes, sit on your hands when you're in church, right? Be still. Be still. And that's what this verse says. Psalm 46, 10. 46, 10. Simply put. Be still, my version says. Yours might say something a little bit different. We'll get there. Be still and know that I am God. 
I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. You know, if you read this, these, few cha uh, these few verses, 11 verses, you'll see that people are striving on the earth. They're trying. They're, they're, they're having wars. They're, they're working their way up to the top of the can. Verse 6 says, the heathen rage. The kingdoms uh, were moved. But he uttered his voice, and the earth melted. How awesome. What an awesome God we serve. We don't need to rage. We don't need to strive. We just need to be still. This, um, you know, we have, we have um, uh, forms of words in English, right? Like, for instance, run is the root of the word, but you might say running. Or you might say ran, which is past tense, or, or future tense would be will run, right? So you get the idea. In Hebrew, it's the same. And this word here, it's, um, it, it's, how would I describe it? What did I put here? Make sure I get it right. Causative. There we go. Causative. So this this um, this word here in the in the Hebrew for be still, it's not just like be still. It's like cause yourself to be still. It's like your work, your action. Follow. Cause yourself. Your your cause. Your your work is to. Stop. Don't you love that? The idea behind be still is that your work, your, your striving, as, as it were, is to see striving. Like, try hard not to do anything. And let me be God. Now let me point it out this way. Turn it, just hold your finger in, in Psalms. So when we're coming back there, turn me to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. I like Hebrews chapter 4 because I'm a Sabbath keeper. And I like to hear about the rest of the Sabbath, the Sabbath of rest. Hebrews chapter 4. It's a beautiful verse about working to stop working. Hebrews 4, verse 11. This is what my version says. It says, let us labor to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Another version would say, strive to enter into that rest. The idea is that your work is to enter into rest. What did Jesus say? He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Not just rest for our arms and legs, but rest for our spirits. This idea of, of be still isn't just a physical stillness. It's not just like stop moving. It's like stop striving. A good way to say it is just let go. Release control. Or as you might say to your dog, if you've got a, maybe a big dog, and just imagine, you know, the dog's trying to chase a, uh, a rat or something. You've got him on a leash, and you're pulling like this. And say, be still, boy, be still. Heal, heal, right? That's the idea. It's like God is telling you, heal. Be still. Let go. And let God be God. I, I wanted to, Joseph, would you help me? All right, come on up here. Maybe some of you have seen this before. Have you ever heard of non-Newtonian what do you call it? Com uh, compositions? Non-Newtonian? Newtonian? It's like ketchup. It's like a ketchup bottle. Like if you take a ketchup bottle and you're like trying to get that ketchup out, right? You turn it upside down, you're like, come on out of there. And it's like not coming out. Have you ever had that experience before? Okay. But then you just kind of jiggle it just a little bit. Like, you turn it kind of sideways and jiggle it, what happens? That comes out, right? Can you just hold that for a minute? This is cornstarch. Have you ever put cornstarch and water together before? Made a non-Newtonian compound? Check this out. We're just going to put some in here. Joseph's going to help us by explaining to you what he experiences. Oh, boy. Sorry, Skip. Let's 
just gooey water. Stir it with me, will you? <laughs> go for it. Go for it, go for it. Ew, okay. It, it, does it feel hard? Yeah, stir it faster. Maybe it'll get faster. Stir it. More pressure. It's harder. Okay, now stop. Now let's go slow. Go through it slow. Thank you so much. You think you can dial your fingers at all? Ah! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, skip. All right, that's good. Yeah, give, me, give me your hand. I'll take that off. You can go sit down. We can check with this out more later. If anybody would like to experience this non-Newtonian compound later, feel free to do so. Wow, awesome. You guys are awesome. This is why we need a body of believers. They help us in our infirmity. Our weaknesses. My, my weakness to think ahead in that case. If you've never experienced this, come up and feel it later, but it's like this. When you press harder on it and you put more force, it forces against you. And if you could take this and you could just pull it right out like this, you know, come up in your hands like one solid piece. But then as soon as you're not squeezing it or, or pressing it hard anymore, it'll just go and just fall right out. It's hard to explain. You just have to come up and feel it for yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. When it comes to God's work, the harder we try, the harder we press, the harder we, the harder we strive, the harder our work is. Our work is not to do. Our work is to surrender. Who's the one with the power? Who's the one with the ability? Who's the one with the understanding? Who's the one with the knowledge? It's God. These people here in, in, uh, in Turn Back with Me to the Psalms, they're, they're striving. They're trying. The nations are raging. But God speaks a word and it melts. I can, be, I can imagine it being like this cornstarch and water is melting through your fingers. Really, you'll have to come up and experience it. I'll have to get more paper towels, too. Let me, let me show you just a couple of spots here. Um, where this, where this makes sense. One is where somebody wasn't going to let go. And maybe you've read this recently. This is Job chapter 27. We're studying Job, the book of Job, right now in our Sabbath school, adult Sabbath school classes. Would you say there was a lot of strife between Job and his friends in this book? The friends are striving against Job, saying, well, you must have done something wrong, obviously, and they're explaining all this stuff, and he's striving back, he's saying, I haven't done anything wrong, this isn't fair, I wish I weren't even born in one place, he says, or more than one place. But look what he says in, in uh, Job 27, verse 6. Job 27, 6. And this uses the same word as be still, except it has the negative in it as well. So, so he says, I will not let go says this, he says, my righteousness I hold fast, I will not let go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Job in all his striving is saying here, as he's striving, he's saying, I will not let go of my righteousness. Now you can read the context to find out, especially later, God's, you know, God speaks to Job as well. God has some good things to say that probably put Job, in, put Job in his place. Turn with me to one more. Exodus. Towards the front, Exodus. We're going to go into chapter 14. Exodus 14. Uh, these stories are good stories of what... Exodus 14. Good stories of, of what God wants from us when it comes to striving. We can start in verse 13. There's so many of these you can find throughout Scripture. I'll just share a few with you this morning. Exodus 14, starting in 13. Now, if you remember, the people of Israel are stuck between a rock and a hard place. They're stuck between mountains on either side. They're stuck between uh, the Red Sea in front and Pharaoh's army behind. They really have nowhere to go. 
Like if there was a path out, I'm sure they would have taken it. They would have continued to strive to be free, strive to find hope. But they come to a spot where they can't strive anymore. And listen to what God says. Moses said, excuse me, what Moses says, the Lord said, starting in 13, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your Friends, God wants to fight your battles for you. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't put in effort. This doesn't mean that you just do whatever you want. But your effort should be put into abiding in Christ. As Jesus says, he says, abide in me in the New Testament, right? Your effort should be put into focusing on Him. Your effort should be put into uh, having faith, surrendering to Him. Something comes into your life that, that, you, um, that is, is, is difficult for you. Something that's either a heart issue. The Lord reveals to you. You find out and say, man, I'm really a creep to my, uh, to my stepsister. For instance, I'm just making something up here. Man, I'm really a creep to my stepsister. It seems like I really don't treat her that well, do I? And you realize this. And then you turn to the Lord. And say, Lord, I have a battle in my life right now. Will you change me? And then maybe even pray that prayer. I would challenge you to pray that prayer. Lord, I give you permission to do whatever it takes to make me the person you want me to be. Let go. Stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. He will fight your battles for you. Now, we don't have time to go through every battle that was ever fought and how the Lord delivered so many people so many times. But when we do let go and we let God be God and we watch Him work and we see His salvation, we will know that He is God. And that's the next part of our verse. Turn back with me. Keep holding your finger in Psalm 46 because we'll keep turning back there. First he says, be still. And then he says, and know that I am God. Know that I am God. Think, for instance, in Joshua chapter 3. Uh, Forty years later, they're at the Red Sea. At first they're at the Red Sea. God parts the Red Sea. At the end, at the end of 40 years, Joshua is leading the children of Israel into the Promised Land. The priests have the Ark of the Covenant. They've got the, uh, the leaders of the 12 tribes going in front, and they come up to the Jordan River. Do you remember what the priests were told to do when they entered the Jordan River? Yes. When they entered the Jordan River, they were to stand still. And who parted the water? It was God. How about when, the Jer when um, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho? Did they, did they start with fighting? They started with praising, didn't they? They praised God first. They walked around that city once every day the last time, the seventh day they walked around it seven times, and then they gave a great shout. How about Jehoshaphat, the king of Jerusalem? Do you remember his war? His war cry was, Praise ye the Lord, his mercy endures forever. God fought that battle, didn't he? If God could fight the battles of the people of old, he can fight the battles of you and me today. Be still. Let go and let God be God. Turn to him and he will answer you. One more, Gideon. We don't have to turn there. If you know the story of Gideon, you know that, that he had thousands and thousands of men who were going to fight. It still obviously wasn't enough men. They were way outnumbered. But God told him, you have too many men. I want it to be less. So they made it less. And he said, you still have too many men because if you fight and you win, you may say, our strength made this happen. Mm -hmm. 
whittled it down to 300 men. They didn't even have what they needed to fight. They didn't have the men. They had sword. Uh, they had uh, hmm? they had uh, pots, pitchers, and, and torches. And they cried and screamed. And God made sure that those people killed themselves. If you have things that are battling you, if you have things that are in your life, and it's going to be different for different people, isn't it? It's going to be different for parents than it is for children. It's going to be different for, for people who are 80 than it is for people who are 8 or 18. It's going to be different for people who own a house than it will be for people who rent. But I know you have trials in your life. <coughs> and I want to encourage you today to let go. If you do, he promises that he will be exalted. Isn't that what you want? I know it is. Because that's what we were made for. We were made for his glory. Psalm 46.10 Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Turn with me to one more verse. This is Mark chapter 4. New Testament story of how Jesus was exalted. Mark chapter 4. When you get there, we'll start in verse 37. Jesus had been preaching all day. They were going across the sea. They were in their boat. Mark 4, 37. It says this. There arose a storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the, the hinder part, or the, the back part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, don't you care that we perish? And he arose and rebuked. See, and he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. This is the same idea. This, the, the, the storm is striving. It, it, it's, it's raging. And Jesus comes and he, he, he commands the sea. He commands the sea. He says, Be still. Peace, be still. The word of God isn't a word like the word of man. When God speaks, things happen. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. In the beginning, God said, let the firmament be, uh, be separated from the firmament, the waters from the waters. And it happened. When God bids something to happen, it's an enabling for it to happen. It's not just like me saying, let's go out to dinner. It doesn't just magically happen. It may, it may not. I mean, plans change. Trust me, I know. I'm sure you do too. But when God says something, it happens. So Jesus says, peace be still, and the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. In your life as well, when God says in Psalm 46.10, be still, and know that I am God, His creative word is calling to you to do the thing he's told you to do. You can be still. Amen. You can be at peace. You can cease striving. You can let go and just let God be God. But look what happens after this, because we're not done. Psalm 46.10 says next that, that he will be exalted. Look what happens here. He said to his disciples in verse 40, Why are you so fearful how is it that you have no faith? In verse 41, listen to this. They feared exceedingly and said unto one another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? When we let go and we let God be God, he will be exalted among his disciples and those around him in the other ships. They were blown away by who God is. They were blown away by who Jesus is. They came 
to them and they said, Lord, we need your help. Still not having a spirit of peace, but of strife. Lord, don't you know we're going to perish? Don't you love us? Don't you care? Even in your unfaithfulness, God is still faithful. When he speaks his word, his word stands fast. He didn't just speak his words to the wind and the waves. He speaks his word to you today. And his word says, let go. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted. Scripture tells us, and you don't have to turn there, I hope that you know some of these verses. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. The, the pagans, the heathens, the, they worry about these things, but your Heavenly Father knows. He knows that you need these things. His command to you is don't worry. His creative word has spoken to you to say, don't worry. We're also told in Philippians to be anxious for nothing. His creative word is speaking to you, telling you don't be anxious. It tells you what to do by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. One more, I know there are other commands out there. So many times God says, be not afraid. Thank you know, don't you? So many times, don't be afraid. If you struggle with anxiety, you struggle with fear, you struggle with worry, this morning, the scripture is telling you, God's creative word is telling you in Psalm 46 to let go. Hebrews 4.11 says to strive to enter or labor to enter into rest. Your work is to turn to God, to look to God, to focus on God. God, I've got this issue with this coworker. God, I've got this issue with myself. God, I've got this issue with my, my, uh, my house, my whatever it is, my children. And God says, maybe a real modern way of saying it would be, chill out. <laughs> hey, chill out. I don't know if this will become a habit. I've heard it. I've heard it does, but you know, my little baby boy. <laughs> pastors talking about their kids using in the sermon illustrations. My little baby boy hasn't lately seemed to be too interested in having his diaper changed. He's been wanting to be held. So when I lay him down, it's, it's not necessarily his diaper being changed, but I lay him down and he gets fussy. And then if I don't pick him up right away, he's ah, you know, he's like he's just like striving to striving to be picked back up, to be in that position that he wants to be in. And it's like, I say that to him, but it doesn't really probably make any sense to him. He doesn't even speak English yet, even though he's learning. I said, just chill out, buddy, it's okay. I'm actually doing something good for you here. You know, and, and if you've ever, never mind, I won't go there, but changing diapers is a good thing, right? Having your diaper changed is a good thing. So uh, I'm trying to do something good for him, and, and, and I mean, he's not any pain, he's not any distress, he's just lying on, on the nice soft bed, and I, I'm taking out the old and putting in the new. Don't you want that in your life? For God to take out the old and to put in the new? And it's so simple, it only takes... It only takes a minute. I think if it's not if it's not a messy one, well, I, I can get it down to under a minute. Probably I've never taught myself, but you know it's relatively painless. And his little heart is just screaming out, "I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this." And I don't know about you, but maybe you've been in that situation before. You're in a situation you 
don't want to be yet. And you know what? We don't live in other countries where, where people have it much worse than we do, as we were talking in my Sabbath school class this morning. We have it pretty darn good here. Even the poor people are richer than, than some people who live in other countries. Eat better. Not to say that there is a need in our country, that's not what I'm saying. But when we strive, we really aren't doing ourselves any good. God's creative word is speaking to you today and telling you just to let go and let God be God. So I've got a challenge for you this week. And my challenge is simple, yet not necessarily easy. When you're tempted to worry this week, let go. And let God be God. When you're tempted to be anxious this week, let go. This is my challenge to you. It's simple, but it's not necessarily easy. You're to strive to enter into that rest. You're to labor to enter into rest. Let go and let God be God. When you're tempted to fear, when, you're te when there's strife around you, for some reason, somehow, if there's strife within you, if there's strife in your mind, if there's strife in your heart, if you're feeling unsettled, anxious, if, you're, if there's strife at work, strife at home, if there's worry about this or that or any other thing, my challenge to you this week, it's not just my challenge, it's not just a challenge either, there's, there's power for you to actually do the thing that God has called you to do because it's His Word that said it. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. Or as I would say, let go and let God be God. I know that you can do this this week. I'm not even going to ask you, do you think you can do it this week? You know how I know you can do it this week? Because it says right here, to do it. And all of God's biddings are enablings. And when he tells you to do something, he has given you the power, through the command, to actually do that thing. So I'm not going to even ask you this week, do you think you can do that? I'm going to challenge you to do it and to claim this verse right here. Psalm 46.10. Be still. Cease. Striving, give up, drop it. Chill out, let go, and let God be God. He will do it just the way He wants, and you'll be all the better. Father, thank you for your words. They're not words like the words of man. Your words are creative words, and you've told us in our hearing this morning, through your scripture, through my mouth, and to each of our ears, to let go, to chill out, to be still, and know that you are God. I'm not even going to ask you to help us to do this. I'm just going to say thank you for giving us the power to let go, to cease striving. Thank you for the promise that you will be exalted in our life when we allow you to be God. I want to see, I want to hear, I want to know more about you. And I want the world to see it through us. May you be glorified as we do what you've commanded us to do still and know that you are God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Respond with me this morning, will you, through song? Respond with me to hymn number 523. My faith has found a resting place. Psalm 523. You can stand, we can stand together, we'll sing this song. We're done with that again.
it's a word of empowerment. And this morning, I think it is. My word of benediction, my, my word of good word of blessing to you today is that may you let go, be still, cease striving, that you may know that God is God and that he may be exalted because that's his command and his enabling to you.